Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. My name is Martin Warwick. We're in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, at the Rye Exhibition Centre at the Broadband World Forum 2014. And I'm talking with Case Links, who is the CTO of a company called, called Green Peak. Now, Case, welcome. Good to speak to you. Nice to be here. Until we started talking just before we came on camera, I hadn't heard of your company and I wasn't aware that you're a chip manufacturer because normally chip manufacturers are enormous, great, huge enterprises churning out things by the billion and the billion and the billion and you hear about them but you don't hear about smaller ones. When you say smaller, you're actually selling a million chips a week so how come we haven't heard of you? Well, it, uh, it takes some time for uh, chip companies to, uh, to become large and uh, we are well on our way. Uh, in 2011, we did uh, 1 million chips. Now we do 1 million chips per week. So we're, we're making progress. Uh, we are a specialty store and we are focused on low power data communications. So, uh, and you know about other specialty stores that, uh, that started in the garage like we did. And uh, you know, from your country, you know CSR. Uh, recently acquired by, uh, by Qualcomm, they, uh, they started also as a small company specialty store in the Bluetooth space and it takes a few years to get big, but we are on our way. Good. Now, well, tell me about it. I'm fascinated by, by this. It's a crowded market. There are big companies there. You provide ultra low power Wi-Fi chips. But one, what is low power? What is ultra low power and why Wi-Fi? Well, our background, we are a spin-out of AT&T Bell Labs, and in AT&T Bell Labs, we have invented Wi-Fi. We made it into a worldwide standard, and we saw that Wi-Fi was doing a race of going faster and faster. And we, are, we realized in the home, there are many applications that require not high data rates, but very long battery life. So we said, wouldn't it be nice if you know, if you take uh, motion sensors or thermostats or door locks, if you can connect these devices also to the internet, uh, your lights, your light switches, but then we very quickly realize that data rate is not important, but long battery life. Because, you know, if you have 50 devices and the battery life is a year, you change the battery every week. Well, you don't like your smart home if you have to change the battery every week. So we said, let's do ultra low power Wi-Fi which means data communication to the internet of all your devices, but that you don't have to change batteries. Uh, and that is how, was, uh, how Greenpeak was born, and that's what we have focused on from day one. Is the technology, it sounds fascinating, and it's, I mean, one, one question that springs to mind immediately is how can you guarantee that a battery will last a generation? Well, actually, it's, it's purely calculation. Uh, let, me, let me give an example. One of the early applications that we are servicing today is the remote control to the set box. Well, at 500 key clicks per day on your remote control, we easily extend 10 years on a single coin cell battery. Yeah, well, you will be throwing away your remote <laughs> control before 10 years. So that means you never have to change your, uh, your battery. And actually, we think that's key for the smart home because all the devices, they send a few bits or bytes every so many times a day. And, well, that's the key, maintenance-free and make sure that you don't have to change batteries. Okay. What kind of a range does it have within the connected home? Yeah, the range that we, uh, that we support in the home is very comparable or even better than Wi-Fi. Range is, of course, very important. You want to put the sensors on different places in your room and you want to make sure that everything connects. Uh, technically, and it depends on your house and whether you have uh, what type of walls you have, but technically we can say we have about four times the range as Wi-Fi has. So we are comfortable by saying we cover your house and, well, of course, just with Wi-Fi, if there is an outskirt in your house and you have such a big house that you need a Wi-Fi repeater, we'll have a Zigbee repeater to support the same. Now, you're, you're selling a, a million chips a week. Where are they going? Is it European? Is it worldwide? Is it regional? Uh, actually, we sell worldwide, uh, and, uh, but we see the big bulk uh, the, the growth of the market, the market acceptance of the smart home 
uh, be led by the United States. Um, uh, from there, it usually goes into English-speaking countries and into other countries. Um, the United States is a very big, uniform market. Uh, China is another kind of real market that is interesting for us, also very large, uniform. Europe is very fragmented, so you know that, that is slowing down technology acceptance. But you know, we are in Europe and we'll address Europe as well. Now then, can you develop the technology you have now further as the Internet of Things becomes more accepted, more and more people are connected, as more and more devices are connected, as more and more things are connected. Can you extend or change the technology or have you reached the limit and this is, this is your product and this is what it does? Two sides. On one side, this is the product, this is what it does. Uniform, worldwide, standard, nothing to worry about. Take Wi-Fi, wherever you take Wi-Fi, you turn it on, it works. Yep. On the other hand, there are many different applications, uh, security application, energy management applications. Well, they work in a context, in an ecosystem, with a set of products at the right price point, with the right business model and distribution model behind it. So we are doing a lot of development at the application level, integrating software, integrating applications together with our chip to make things work and that, say, a customer of ours, you know, it can be a Chinese operator or an American operator or a European operator. They want to sell lifestyle systems. They want to uh, enable seniors to live at home longer. They want to have it wrapped in a packet that they can to deliver to a customer. Well, our chips are in there, but we also enable product builders to pack the whole system together and deliver it to an operator. Uh, so our, our business, although it is a chip business, usually chip business nowadays goes way beyond into full system support, cloud services and applications. So there's a lot of work for us to do. Now you mentioned the United States first and then English speaking countries, etc, etc. Um, what about the smart home, Internet of Things is starting to ramp up. Smart home has been a dream, a thought, and an aspiration for a long time. And we've seen some dead ends. We've seen people going down various technology routes that have ended in failure, frankly, yeah. or just yeah. quietly disappeared. How close do you think we are to having a genuinely connected home with all that sort of access that we're talking about? Let, let's, let's, let's quickly list why things failed. Very expensive. Yep. Uh, no standard. Absolutely. Um, uh, no cost-effective uh, products, no total solutions, and what I what I usually show show as well is today we have smartphones. So there are cost-effective products on the market today. There are uh, standards. There are operators driving it, and what usually makes a smart home expensive is a display on the wall that is you know kind of a user device. Today. Everybody has a dashboard. It's called a smartphone, and it's an enabler for a lot of smart home applications. So what we see today is that slowly but surely, all these roadblocks in the past that created those dead ends are starting to fall away with new advanced technology, with standards, with operators driving it, with uh, low-cost products being available and affordable to go mainstream. What people don't know is we have developed Wi-Fi and it took 10 years for Wi-Fi to be accepted. If I ask my son today, do you know there was life before Wi-Fi? <laughs> He's looking at me and he says, no, I don't believe there was li life before Wi-Fi. But it took 10 years for the market to accept Wi-Fi. Yeah, it did. It required a standard. There was no standard. It required cost-effective product. It needed to be integrated in computers and laptops. That were big hurdles to take. So we are going through the same phase today with Zigbee to get all these roadblocks removed, but we believe that all the key ingredients are there to not be on a dead end, but onto really a new glorious revolution. Well, it's a fascinating story, and I certainly won't forget Greenpeak. Case links, very thank good. you very much indeed. Happy to be stopped by. <laughs>